Hello, friends. I have been deeply saddened by today's news that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has passed away at Balmoral in Scotland. For 70 years, Her Majesty has been the Head of State, Head of the Commonwealth, Supreme Governor of the Church of England, and Head and Commander-in-Chief of the British Armed Forces. We will never, at least not in our lifetimes, see another individual with the constitutional expertise and political knowledge to match Her Majesty's. Over the last 70 years, she has met with every Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, beginning with her first Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. Her hands and eyes have been on innumerable official and secret documents. She has travelled to meet and played host to a myriad of world leaders. Kings, queens, presidents and prime ministers alike. Her expertise cannot and should not be undervalued. And I believe that history will show that we will come to recognise its loss. It is, nevertheless, a loss that must pale into insignificance when compared with that experienced by her family and friends, those who knew her and loved her. Now the world will look on as Operation Unicorn gets underway. This is the alternate to Operation London Bridge, and it is what will be pressed into service as Her Majesty has passed away in Scotland. We have been informed that the plan will proceed as follows. The Scottish Parliament will be suspended immediately. A motion of condolence in the chamber will be expected within 36 hours. Her Majesty will be moved to Holyrood House temporarily. She will then be carried to St Giles Cathedral on the Royal Mile in Edinburgh for another temporary stop. Her coffin will later travel on the Royal Train from Waverley Station to London. It is expected that the Queen's funeral will take place around 10 days from now. Here on Reading the Past, I will be postponing this week's video. As is the custom, as one reign ends, another immediately begins. And thus, I will finish with this. The Queen is dead. Long live the King.